everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic summer so far. I'm certainly enjoying my summer break and I've been getting a lot of reading done. So for today's video, I thought it might be fun to share with you what I read in June. Since the only thing I love more than books is my cat Rusty, I decided to use a Rusty rating scale. One Rusty means the book was not for me. Two Rusties means the book was forgettable but readable. Three Rusties means the book was enjoyable but ultimately underwhelming. Four Rusties means it was a good read but but I'm not shouting about it from the rooftops. And five resties means I'm telling all my bookworm friends about it. First up, I read Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. This isn't a book I would probably have picked up on my own, but it was given to me by a good friend and I trust her judgment. So I decided to kick off the month of June with this pick. It's a slightly dystopian story about a young boy named Bird who is in search of his mother who has gone missing. There are themes like an oppressive government and political and artistic rebellion, as well as a theme of poetry and connection through tragedy. Ultimately, it's a quest story and you know I love a quest. However, I will say this book is a little bit heavy on the sort of poetic descriptions and less so on the actions and activities. The main thing I enjoyed about the book were some of the descriptions of characters. As a writer myself, I'm always looking to other writers to see how did they achieve something in their own work. And Celeste Ng does a great job of describing describing locations, but in particular describing people and these micro moments of interaction between them. So in Our Missing Hearts, there's a few small scenes that I think will always stick out in my brain and I'll be able to return to them when I'm looking for inspiration for how to convey these subtleties of human interaction and relationships. I give Our Missing Hearts two out of five resties. Next up, we have the book that no matter what I did, I couldn't seem to get away from. That is Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. I have read multiple books from Ann Patchett and I never really liked how she brought the stories together in the end. I always found the endings to be kind of unsatisfying in some way. So to say that I was resistant to reading Tom Lake would be an understatement. However, so many people were singing its praises, its cover was showing up on Instagram, and I would see displays of it in the front of any bookstore that I went into, and when it became available through the public library to listen to the audiobook, which is narrated by Meryl Streep, I decided to give it a chance. And Meryl Streep did an incredible job, but I still couldn't stop thinking that it was Meryl Streep because this story is about a former actor, and there's a lot of scenes discussing things like theater and movie stars and essentially it just was really hard for me not to imagine Meryl Streep rather than the main character of the novel. As strange as it might be to say, I actually really enjoy books that are set during the pandemic because part of my fascination with this genre of books that we're starting to see is getting to experience someone else's early pandemic experience during the lockdown. So one of the things that I found really compelling about this novel Novel was imagining what life might have been like for people who lived on a rural farm or in a rural area during those early scary days of lockdown when we didn't know what the future entailed. I give Tom Lake three out of five resties. The good thing about going into reading Tom Lake with low expectations that I would enjoy it is that I did find it pleasantly surprising. I was reading the book while I was on a trip and I was traveling to London and Berlin and I will say that Sometimes books make more sense in certain locations. So as soon as I finished Tom Lake, I realized that I wanted to be reading a book that wasn't so typically American. I wanted to read a book that might better suit the environment that I found myself in. So after finishing Our Missing Hearts and listening to the audiobook of Tom Lake, I decided to go to a classic of my favorite genre, and that is the murder mystery. I am a big fan of murder mysteries, and it all began with the writer Agatha Christie, who is one of the best-selling authors of all time and wrote, I believe, 66 novels, including the Poirot 
series, which is what I decided to lean into in this part of my trip. Since I began reading the Poirot series, I've jumped around to different novels, particularly the ones that were made into films because it's fun to read the novel and then watch the film. But in this case, I decided to go back to the very early days of the series. Since I had read the first couple novels from Agatha Christie in the Poirot series, I read The Murder on the Links, the number three book in the Poirot series. Funnily enough, although I chose the book because I thought it would be set in England, where I was at the time, this book is actually set in France. It's a classic murder mystery where someone has been murdered and Poirot and his best friend Hastings are called in and there's also some forces of opposition and suspects and murder weapons and then a second murder happens. No spoilers, of course, but it's up to Poirot to untangle this web of secrets and deceit and unexpected twists in order to uncover who was the true killer. To me, reading an Agatha Christie novel is like a palate cleanser. If I've read a couple of books that were maybe a little heavy and dark, I like to read a murder mystery. I know they, those can be a little bit dark themselves, but there's something about Poirot that just helps me to escape my day-to-day -day life and fall into the story so easily. And I'm so familiar with that character and the sort of world. And I'm very inspired by Agatha Christie I do hope to write a murder mystery someday, but I know I'll never be able to reach the genius of some of her works, like my favorite, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I forgot to rank this one when I was making the video, but I give The Murder on the Links four out of five resties. June was not only a fiction month for me, I also finally was able to get a copy of the book The Age of Anxiety by Dr. Ellen Vora. Many of you know that I focus a lot of this channel on overcoming anxiety and processing emotions, so I wanted to read this account that I had heard from multiple people provided a really interesting and unique perspective on the sort of of medical, biological, and psychosocial model of anxiety. This book is fantastic. I give it five out of five resties. The book really breaks down what exactly is going on on a biological level and also from the sort of holistic picture of what it is about our society that contributes to so many people having such great levels of anxiety. It's stuff that I've heard a lot from different spaces, but the book really brings everything together and provides a really detailed overview of all all the different factors that might be coming together to lead a person to feel heightened anxiety on a regular basis. I also felt that while the book provides really concrete strategies to help people reduce the anxiety that is caused by these factors, it wasn't overly pedantic or prescriptive. So a lot of the suggestions are ones that we've heard before and we might wanna brush them off like get better sleep and improve our nutrition or consider impacts of things like caffeine. However, I really felt like this book provided the medical and psychological basis for why these changes could be impactful. And as somebody who has really adapted life to this kind of model of anxiety and therefore I experience a much lower level of anxiety than I did in the past, I really found this book to be quite powerful, even though these are a lot of things that I've already started to do. Now it's time for the part of the video that I wasn't sure I was going to include because I'm not going to lie, I have been fully sucked into one fandom world for the entire month of June. And that's right, I'm talking about Bridgerton. I watched the first and second season of Bridgerton, but it didn't particularly move me to read the books. However, I am a huge fan of Nicola Coughlin and I couldn't help myself. I had to know what was going to happen with Colin and Penelope. So in between the release, of the first four episodes of season three and the second four episodes of season three, I decided to read Romancing Mr. Bridgerton, which is the book that season three of the TV show is based on. There are a lot of differences between the relationship in the book between Colin and Penelope and the one that is portrayed on the show. However, I will say that I actually preferred the show's version. I know it's kind of controversial and trust me, I have watched plenty of fan edits about Bridgerton season three in the last month, but I really really enjoyed how in the TV show it was so much more focused on their friendship, which I felt like was harder to convey in the book. And in the book, I found Colin to be a little bit more standoffish and less sweet. And the character on the TV show was played so excellently by Luke Newton that it's really hard not to fall in love. I give romancing Mr. Bridgerton four out of five resties. After my foray into the world of romance novels and Bridgerton, I had to go back to my tried and trues, and that is a murder mystery. I decided to read 
the book The Maidens by Alex Michaelides, which is about a group therapist who is called in to investigate the murder of a young woman at Cambridge University in England. The murders seem connected to this shadowy but charismatic professor, as well as a sort of secret society known as The Maidens. This book was a disappointment. I had so been looking forward to reading this book after I read Michael Eady's The Silent Patient, and even though I was able to predict the ending of that book, I still was looking forward to his brilliant storytelling, and that was just not very present. I felt that the book was quite hackneyed, and also the ending just totally fell flat for me. I give The Maidens one out of five Rusties. On my flight back from England, I like to stay up the entire flight to help me deal better with the jet lag coming back to California. So in order to stay awake, I picked up the incredible, moving, and honestly chilling at times memoir from Britney Spears, The Woman in Me. As a millennial who came of age during the pop princess era, I thought I knew Britney Spears, but my world was completely rocked. I listened to this audiobook for six hours straight. I was on a plane, but I had other options. I could not tear myself away. It was utterly fascinating, full of pathos, some really incredible and inspiring stories. And what I found most powerful about it was how Brittany really called into question some of the things that were asked of her, not just on a personal individual level, but also like what she represented to her time period. I found that it was really kind of a, a feminist book in a way where she was really asking us to look back on that time and question what sort of rules she was being held to, what sort of obligations she was being held to that were not necessarily the same for other people in that same world. Also, I feel like the whole Free Britney thing was something that was really made fun of a lot in social media for a period of time, but if you read this book or listen to this audiobook, you will never see that the same way ever again. You will never again question her strength. I give The Woman in Me by Britney Spears five out of five resties. Since coming back from my trip, I've been really enjoying the opportunity on summer break to read all day. And the first book that I read since returning home is The Story of a New Name by Elena Ferrante. Elena Ferrante is the pseudonym of an Italian writer who has written this series, the Neapolitan Novels, which is the story of two young girls who grew up together in Naples. And this second book is the story of them in their early 20s, um, the few years between like late teens, early 20s. So pretty significant years in the lives of these two young women and their lives diverge quite significantly. I'm not gonna talk about what happens in this book because it's the second in a series of four books, but I do wanna highly recommend that people pick up the first book, which is My Brilliant Friend. I also resisted this book for many years. I tried listening to the audiobook once and I couldn't keep all the characters straight. And in fact, while reading this series, even while reading the second book, I'm using the reference in the beginning pretty frequently to remember who each of the characters are. But nonetheless, it is incredibly compelling and it really is a fascinating insight into the lives of these two characters and seeing just the two paths that life could take for women who were born in this specific place at this specific time. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the Neapolitan novels at the pool this summer. I give the story of a new name five out of five resties. The next book on my June reading list is Powerful by Maisie Hill. This is also a nonfiction book and this comes from the life coach and teacher, Maisie Hill. It's all about the nervous system and how we can leverage the power of the nervous system in order to make changes in our life. So she talks about things like regulating our nervous system in order to overcome things like procrastination, people pleasing, and to deal with things that are challenging like criticism, making decisions, and going after big goals. I give Powerful five out of five resties. And last but not least, we have the book that I was anticipating as soon as I heard about its publication. And that is, I'm mostly here to enjoy myself by the incredible writer, Glennis McNichol. I read her first memoir, No One Tells You This, many years ago, and it instantly became one of my favorites. And this book is the story of Glennis after the lockdown, she decided to go to Paris for one month in the summer of 2021 after almost 
18 months of basically no contact with anyone because of pandemic lockdowns and living in New York City. So she goes to Paris, a place that she's very familiar with where she has friends and they eat cheese along the river and they go to brunch and she rides her bicycle and she has relationships with younger men. It is a fun, pleasurable summer read. If you take issue with a woman in complete control and having agency over her own life, this is not the book for you. I loved it and I give I'm Mostly Here to Enjoy My Myself, five out of five resties. So those are the books I read in June. I'm looking forward to July. It's usually my best reading month of the year because it's the month that is completely untouched by any responsibilities because I'm on summer break. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video about the books that I read in July. Happy reading.